So my name is Kevin Coates. I have been presenting here at the conference for, I don't know, about 10 years. You know, when you think about signal integrity, I don't know of any company that says, I want my circuit board to work. What a company says is, I want my system to work. And obviously, if your circuit board is highly engineered, you know, you go through and you, you do your traces, you make sure that everything's really well impedance matched, and you do your signal integrity really carefully, but then you put a connector and a cable on that's not really designed for constant impedance, and then your whole system doesn't work. So, obviously, you have to design the entire system. You have to look at it like a, a system and not just a circuit board. Energy flows not in the conductor, but in the space between the conductor and the reference plane. Now in a cable, you don't have a reference plane, but you have a reference conductor. So energy flows, and I'm talking about the leading edge of the wave. So as the wave travels down the cable, you have the, 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 the wave front, and it's going to charge up capacitors in the transmission line, which is the cable, because every high frequency signal is traveling down a wire like a transmission line. So as the wave front travels down the line, it's going to flow in the space between the wire and the reference wire. So if that's a ground wire, then great. If that's another signal, then you're kind of in trouble. As far as electrically, I would say the way to use a connector correctly is to design it such that the return path uh, is accessible for the, the signal. Every time a signal goes out on a wire, you have to have a return path. And that return path uh, should be power or it should be ground, a way that you will basically control your impedance. If you have somewhat of controlled impedance in a cable, then you're gonna have signal integrity, which means you won't have so much attenuation, for your high frequency signals, you won't have so many reflections, you won't have so many FCC issues with uh, emitted radiation. Those are the things that really need to be taken care of in both connectors and cables. So cables really are the same issue. You know, if you have a cable, you need to control that return path. And I guess I should have said on the connector part, you have to engineer your connector in such a way that you have power and ground that are close together. You certainly don't want any signals between power and ground because they reference each other. And you also want to make sure that you have plenty of grounds on your connector and cables such that every wire has access to a nearby reference conductor. So for example, let's say you have a 20 conductor uh, cable and a 20 conductor uh, connector you're going to want not just one or two power lines, not just one or two ground wires, you're going to want lots of ground wires in between those so that every wire has access to a return path. That return path is going to make sure that you don't have so many radiated emissions because your impedance is going to be controlled correctly. The most important thing is that from your connector all the way to the other end of the connector and your cable in the middle, your impedance should be controlled. And what that means is for your connector, you're going to want to disperse grounds in between the signals uh, if possible. And if you can't, then, you know, you're going to roll the dice. So, you know, maybe it's not an important signal and that's up to you. Maybe it's an LED turn on or a switch input. Not every signal is important, but in terms of all the important signals, all the high speed signals, you're going to want to make sure that they all have good return paths. So from end to end, you need to make sure that your signals have that controlled impedance by having access to a return conductor back to the source. So, you know, if you have, say, your 20 conductor cable or your uh, 20 connection connector, if you have just one ground there, then obviously a whole bunch of those signals don't have any access to a return path. So that power is going to return back on something and it's probably going to be a nearby wire. And that nearby wire may have a signal on it. it. Well, it's probably going to have something on it and it's going to come back and take some sort of torturous route back to the buffer that sent it. 
And so that's the bad thing. You don't want so much crosstalk in your cables. And to avoid that, you need to make sure that every cable, every signal has access to a return path. So the answer to the question is, you know, any signal that can't get to a return path is going to be a real problem.